This tool is definitely the best way to start a new TypeScript project. You can choose here any front-end or back-end framework that you want with a bunch of other options and create your desired tech stack. This tool is called Better T Stack and it is open source, so you can go to their GitHub page and give them a star. They already have 2,800 stars, it's really impressive. And in this video, I'm going to create my tech stack using this tool. There are two ways how we can do this. First one is through the CLI command. So we can choose here between bun, pmpm PM, and npm, copy that command and put it inside of our terminal. This one is going to give us a bunch of prompts asking us whatever technologies we need, but I like the second option more and that's the builder inside of the better T stack here. So here we have that visual moment where we can see everything, what are we choosing? And when we are done, we just copy this command from here, which is always different, whatever options we choose. This one is changing all the time. And in the end, we're going to get our perfect CLI command that is going to install everything for us. And let's build our tech stack. So first I'm going to click this reset button. So we are back on defaults and I'm going to name my app, my better Orkish app like this. Now we have to choose our technologies. I'm going to make my browser a little bit smaller so you can see everything. And we need to choose our front-end framework. So I'm definitely going to choose Next.js because that's something I'm mostly using and I want to see in the end how is the code looking with versions and everything. Then we have native front-end. I'm not going to choose native front-end. I don't know anything about that, so I'm just going to skip it. Then we have our back-end. So Hono is really a great choice, but I'm going to choose Next.js app router and API routes. And it's only because most of my apps are using app router with all the API routes and server actions. So I want to see how is it going to look. Then we have our runtime. I'm going to stick with bun API. I'm not going to, to choose the RPC, but ORPC is really a great choice. I need to create video about that. So I'm choosing ORPC. Then for our database, I'm going to use Postgres. ORM, definitely Drizzle. Then DB setup. By default, it's no cloud DB integration, but I'm going to choose Neon Postgres because I have an account there and it's really easy for me to just create my own DB URL. Then for deployment, I'm going to skip deployment for now and because it's Next.js, it's easy to just put it on Vercel. And we have better auth here. That's really awesome. So I'm going to click better auth to see the setup and everything. How is it looking? Then for the package manager, I'm going to use PMPM. Add-ons. This one is really interesting. We can choose turbo repo, mono repo, which is really awesome. So I'm going to leave turbo repo. Then we have Ultrasight, that's why I really want to see this. So that's a biome preset with bunch of things and they even have like auto sorting and things like that with only one dependency, that's really awesome. And I'm going to choose Husky so we can have our pre-commits and also Fumadocs. So this is really interesting that we can pick Fumadocs and we can create our documentation instantly with Fumadocs. That's really a great addition to this better T stack and we have examples. So let's try AI example. I'm not even sure which AI model they're going to use. I think it's using Google Gemini. Then git initialize git repository. Yes, why not install all, all the dependencies, of course. And now we can just copy this entire command from here put it inside of our terminal, inside of my projects. So we can see here that we are creating better T stack with the my better Orkish app name. Then we are passing on bunch of parameters, which all of these are just chosen here. It's no like some big mathematics or something. And we are just going to click enter. And let's see how fast is it going to be. So choose your Neon setup method. I'm just going to go quick setup with Neon DB. And that one is opening here. My, let me show you here. So it's setting up my database. I'm just going to copy this DB URL from here and 
choose editors. I'm going to choose VS Code cursor Winsurf. I'm using cursor. And now, after that, let's see if it's going to install everything immediately. Choose a template. Next.js, Fumadox, MDX, recommended template. Let's just go with that one. And then we are installing all of our dependencies, running pmpm PM install. So Fumadox is set up successfully and also project template successfully scaffolded. Awesome. That's it. So now we can go to my better Orkish app and let's open this code to see how does it look. Here is the code and let's check our file structure. So we have here our apps directory where we have Fumadox, server, and web. And that's just a basic way of doing things in a monorepo. We have everything separated, so that's good. Then let's check our package.json. So here we should have, yes, biome and ultrasite. So that's good. And we have husky. And I'm really curious if we have ultrasite command inside the pre-commit and we have it. So we have here MPX ultrasite format. So that one is working really nice job on this one. Then if we go to, let's check web first. So this one should be next.js. So if we go to package.json, we can see next 15.3.0. The latest version is 15.4.5. So it is close enough. It is really important that it's the major release and if it was 14 point something, that would be bad. So this one is good. We have React 19. Then we have Zod 4 Plus. That's also good. We have AI SDK. That's really great news that it's using AI SDK for the AI functions. And Better Auth 1.3.4, which is the latest version. So this one is really good. And we see Redix UI, which means it's using shed cn so far so good so let's check now our server here so if you go to package.json and here we are using also next.js and this is maybe my bad because i chose next.js for our backend and i chose mono repo in the same time so it would be much better if i chose here hono backend for example but let's see how does it look so we have here next 15.3.0 and we have orpc server and client with the neon database serverless so it's also using ai sdk and better auth and let's check how does it look so we have the sources directory i don't like that it would be maybe good to have an option for Next.js to choose app directory without the source here. Then we have the app and inside, yeah, we probably have a bunch of API routes. So this API route is used for better auth. Then we have RPC where we are using ORPC. So this one is giving us API calls that we can use inside of our front end. And as you saw here, if I return back, it's not yet formatted with ultrasight, so I had to press save in order to format it. So we could just run npx ultrasight format, and that one would be solved. And we have here our routers, and everything looks pretty much set up. Let's just check code now for our front end, and then we can run the whole thing and see if it is working or not. So we have here inside of our components UI, we have a bunch of shed CN components. So that one is really good. I like that part. Then we have here AI page. Let's see what we have there. So we are using use chat from AI SDK and we have use effect. This one is also maybe not good. I would never use use effect in something like this because it's Next.js. We could just do things with server actions, uh, but it's probably working, so let's see how does it look when we run it. Then we have here a bunch of inputs, so this looks like some kind of AI chat. Then here on our dashboard, we also have use effect, and I don't know what is it complaining about, let's see. This dependency is being used here, but it is not specified in the hook dependency list, okay. So we need to put in the dependency list. I'm not going to do more AI did it for me, okay. So. Let's run this thing and see if everything is working together with this Fumadox. So I'm going here, I'm going to run pmpm dev. 
and let's see what is it going to say. So we are using Turbo Dev. Fumadox is running. We can see here the terminal and everything from a Turbo repo. So we are running our local Turbo Pack on localhost 4000. Okay. So I'm going here to localhost 4000 like this. And let's see how does it look if it is working or not. And here it is, this is Fumadox. So we can see here that we have search for our documentation, light and dark mode working, and we can just start writing our documentation right in. So this one is awesome. And Fumadox is really a, a great, great tool. I still need to create video about that one. And I also want for ABCN to, to do everything with Fumadox. Then let's check if everything is working with our server and web. So I'm going here now to 3001, which should be our web front end framework, which is Next.js in our example. And here it is. So better T stack, checking API status, checking, checking, checking. Let's see if that one is going to work. And we should have here, yes, connected, awesome. So this means that we could probably use already our better auth. Let's check first our env file. So env example env, here it is. So this one is from the web. So this one is using localhost 3000, okay, as a next public server URL. And let's check the other one on our server here. Yeah, so we have here our database URL that is automatically created for Neon database. And we have better auth secret already, better auth URL, and we just need to put Google Generative AI API key. So it is using Gemini, it's using Google, awesome. So let's see if everything is working. So now here, if I go to sign in, we should have some kind of login page. Yeah, we have create account with better auth. So I can now create some org dev with my the org dev at gmail.com and I can put some password and sign up. Not now. So we have here an internal server error. Let's see what's going on. So I'm going here to the server and we can see that the relation user does not exist. That means that we don't have any tables in our database, so we need to run drizzle kit push or something like that. But it doesn't matter. It means that better auth is working, so that's good. Let's go now to the AI chat to see how does it look. So ask me anything to get started. We have this big input, so we can type in here something, and we would probably get a response here if we had that API key. So in our ENV, we can just put Google Generative AI API key, and that would probably work. And let's see now what we have on our dashboard. Nothing. Okay, so it's probably protected by something. Let's go to dashboard. Yeah, so that's private data basically coming from ORPC, and we need to be logged in. But it is just showing welcome username and private data from our user. So there is nothing special to see. And that's it. We created this boilerplate just by running one CLI command. And we would probably need like two hours to create something like this from scratch. And I think this tool is really great thing if you want to learn new technologies. For example, I'd really like to learn a little bit about Convex because I never used it on real world applications. So this is really a great opportunity for me to choose Convex with any front-end framework that I'd like, Next.js or 10-stack router or whatever, and to see how is everything being set up with Convex. And I really think that you should try this one out. This is the perfect opportunity to learn about different technologies and different frameworks and to compare the differences and to see how are all of these technologies working. I hope you like this video, Warriors. For more content like this, join the Mighty Horde. Subscribe.